All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through some gel coat polishing today. You can see this is my friend's boat. It came from South Carolina. He recently bought. It's kind of mottled. There's some chalky and some glossy spots. Overall, though, I mean, it still does have some life to it. When you look at the boat from far back, it does kind of have some chalkiness to the exterior. The interior, though, and the rub rails have no shine whatsoever. You can see in there, too. So I'm going to take you through how to polish all these surfaces out and kind of my process for doing that. I'll start with the products that I use. Um, there's two machines that I use more than any other. Actually, for most of the hulls that I use, I use the DeWalt direct drive polisher unit there on the right. Um, it's a high-speed unit. Um, the DA one, actually, that was what I was using to sand the bottom of the hull the other day. Um, you put a foam pad on it, and you can use that for compounding as well. I don't like the port cable DA over the entire hull surface because it just takes forever to do. The results that you can get with the machine on the right um, in a fraction of the time make that machine far better for doing large surfaces of the boat. If you need to get in nooks and crannies, that's a fine machine, but it's not one that I would do uh, an entire boat with. It just takes forever. Um, some of the products that I use for the compounds, I do have this gallon of material. This is actually mold and tooling compound. So 3M product, it's got a good grit to it. I would say this is about what a 3M Super Duty would be. Um, so it's a pretty heavy compound. And then here's another compound that I use, a 3N heavy cut. You can see um, on these gradual scales there, it talks about where you're at as far as what you're doing. Um, so this is a cutting compound. You can see there's a polishing and then a final wax. So this is a heavier compound to use on the surface, but it can get you the luster back pretty quickly. And then you can work your way to a lighter grit and then finally to a finish. 3M makes probably some of the best compounding products and it's what I use. Um, Meguiar's also has great products, but Meguiar's is just rebranded 3M products. Uh, so if you can find either one of those, I think they're great. Um, so this guy here is the unit that I use. I use it at full speed, which is 3,500, 3,600 RPM, but it's adjustable. This does take some getting used to. You need to know what you're doing. Um, it's a variable speed. And the port of cable unit here is variable speed as well. Got a little dial down there. And then I'll see on and off. So I'm going to take you through how to polish here. Uh, I'm going to get my camera set up. I'm going to go to work. All right, so I'm going to start working on the hull side. I'm going to be using my variable speed direct drive unit with a wool pad on it. Um, for those who've never seen this trick before, whenever you're working with extension cords, it's great to loop them over and then connect them back. Because that way, when you're pulling on it, the cords don't come unplugged as you're dragging it around. So this little trick is quite helpful. Um, so typically, I just take some of the compound, I'll put it on the pad, and also put some down the hull side. And I'll start from there. This is a dirty job. Um, I do wear just a light mask so that all the dust and whatnot doesn't go into my lungs. So I start by putting the wheel flat, just kind of work the compound over the surface and then slowly speed up the wheel.
So with just a little bit of work, you can see you get a pretty good luster. Um, it's important to keep this flat over the large flat surfaces every once in a while. If you want to roll it on the edge, that's fine, but you always want to keep this moving all across the hull. Let's see if I can show you the gloss that I'm getting here. You can see down there, that's where I stopped. So with just a little bit of effort with the wheel, you can see the finish that you get. Now, honestly, it shouldn't take me more than probably 10 to 15 minutes to get this whole side done for the first pass. So you can see here, I got the hull side done back to just about that area right there. You can see the difference in the hull side from what was chalky to what's been polished. Here's a shot of the gunnels. So that was one that I polished. That one's not been polished. You can see the difference in the luster. I'm going to go through the entire hull side and I'll do the cap and then get to the interior as well. Okay, so how do you polish non-skid? I know it gets asked quite a bit. Um, oddly enough, with a scrub brush. Um, the way I do it, is I'll put compound right on the non-skid and you can see this area has not been done this area has been done now I'm doing this by hand because I don't have a proper brush but they do make brushes that go in the end of a drill and make this job super easy but literally take it and just keep working it And when you have one of the drill attachments, this goes way easier. See the difference there though not done done so that's how you do it all right you can see top of the gunnel there that i polished i'm going to polish the inside of this i'm going to do half the boat so you guys can see the difference between the two all right so this first quick pass on the interior here you can see the dramatic difference that just a little polishing does. Sure, it's got crazing, but once you hide that crazing with a gloss, the crazing tends to go away. You can see, got down the gunnel here, just the drastic difference it makes. No gloss over here. Same thing on the exterior. I'll get out here, take a quick look. So you can see you got to that point. See the difference there? This side's not been done. side all 
All right. So I got some brushing to do on the non-skid to get the residue out, but you can see how that turned out. It's got a nice luster to all of gel coat now. That was all pretty burned out. And when you come over here and compare it to this side, you can see there is no luster whatsoever. No reflection. So coconut oil. I know a lot of people think I'm downright crazy for doing this. I really don't care. It works great for me. Um, the theory here is gel coat is an oil-based product. Um, the reason why you get crazing and other factors in gel coat is from UV exposure and from heat. What ends up happening is the oils that are in the gel coat end up going away and the gel coat loses all of its elasticity and actually starts to shrink. So that's why you get crazing and other things that happen in gel coat and you end up getting with all those defects. Um, wax, really all the wax is doing is taking the oil from the wax and depositing it onto the surface. Then it has chalking agents that are in it and those chalking agents dry out so that you can remove that and then the wax stays on. So this is coconut oil. It's uh, kind of formed up into a hard paste right now. It's kind of cool out here. Um, literally all I do is I take chunks of it or you know when it's a little bit more paste like I'll take a lot of it and I will just work it on to the surface the same as you would with a wax I just do this by hand because it keeps the oil melting it works it into the surface and I will go over the entire boat and put the wax on. Sorry, not wax, coconut oil. Just like it is a wax. So now you can put that on, you can let it sit. I usually let it sit for well, anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. I'll go and do the whole boat and then I'll start back over. Well, what I'm doing is letting the oil sit on the gel coat and kind of absorb in. When you're done, literally, I just take a microfiber rag and I'll go back over and I will polish the surface off of whatever oil is remaining on the surface. And that leaves the boat with a nice luster with a protective film of oil on it. All right, so I have done basically from that stanchion forward to the bow with oiling. You can see the finish that I got there. To give you an idea of what that side looked like about an hour ago, this is what it looked like completely chalked, no luster, dirty, to this, which looks like new. You might be able to see it right here is where I stopped oiling. So you can see this has been compounded and that has a really nice finish to it. But that line right there is where I started oiling forward. So you can see even between the oil and just the compound, the finish that you get. There's the hull side itself. To the bow. And again. That's the chalky surface that it was. All right, so hopefully you guys got uh, some good information out of that tutorial. 
Um, one thing I'll always say is the coconut oil is not a magic potion that cures everything. If you put it on that chalky side, it's going to be chalky in about another week. It doesn't last. You, the key to getting a good luster is compounding, cleaning the surface, polishing the surface to get that luster back. And then once you get that back, all the oil is doing is keeping it hydrated, keeping it protected, keeping the oils in it and keeping it to a high luster finish. So hopefully uh, if you guys got any questions, uh, feel free to write something in the comments or contact me directly. I'm gonna get going on the rest of this boat. Um, it'll probably be another week or so before it's done, but I wanted to get half of it done today and kind of show you guys how to take care of it and what the process is. Thanks.